Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Thursday, July the 15th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about an underdog play that you can get at better than even money that I like. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I believe the fight is taking place at 168 pounds. It's between favorite Jack Cullen and underdog Avni Yildurum. You're getting about a plus 120 on Yildurum. I like Yildurum to win the fight. I'm going with the underdog in this one. Let's talk about why. First... Yildurim's the bigger man, not the taller man, but the bigger man. Understand, he fought Canelo at 168. He fought Anthony Durrell at 168. By contrast, Jack Cullen fought Felix Cash at 160. Jack Cullen was a six foot three inch middleweight. Well, now he's gaining weight. I think. The weight gain is going to hurt him because of his fight style. Let's talk about it. Cullen has a good jab, but he doesn't fully use his height. He's the tall guy leaning over the pocket. What I want people to think about is the fact that height can be an asset if you know how to lean backwards, if you know how to hide yourself, if you can force the other guy to reach for you. But height becomes a detriment when you're too pocket centric, when you're leaning over the pocket, when you need to lean over the pocket to get leverage on your punches, right? In my opinion, Jack Cullen's the latter. He likes to lean over the pocket. He isn't a clincher. Right? What happens is guys start throwing heavy looping punches to try to land on him. Felix Cash caught him with a looping right hand. Right? Cullen was hurt. Cullen went down. Cullen also doesn't have a strong core body. It's very hard to have a strong core body when you're 6'3 and you're fighting at 160 or 168. Right, so what does that mean? That means that as he's leaning over the pocket, another guy is able to rough him up, is able to wrestle with him a bit. Cullen likes to throw hooks. Hook fests end up breaking out. It ends up being a bit of a brawl. Right, that's the opposite of, let's say, the tall guy who can lean backwards, who can move around the ring, or the tall guy who can catch shots on his forearm that never quite reach his head. This isn't that guy. He's not Ali. He's not Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Understand, too, Cullen, in my opinion, and I know I'm sounding hard, but we're not here to be polite. We're talking about risking money. Cullen, the favorite, is, in my opinion, not a big puncher. He also wants to fight, not to box. That's terrible for a tall guy who is lanky and who doesn't have a lot of fat covering his vulnerable areas. Doesn't have a lot of fat to cushion the blows. Also, because Cullen doesn't really know how to use his jab, doesn't really know how to back away, in my opinion, he can't control the pace of the fight. Now, Yildirim lost two recent fights, right? But I need for people to understand that both Canelo and Anthony Durrell have had shares of the title at 168 pounds, right? Understand, both are elite fighters, elite fighters. Let me also say, too, the Durrell fight was disappointing. 
because Durrell cuts, gets cut by Yildura, right? The fight then gets stopped prematurely. And of course, they go to the scorecards and Durrell wins the fight. In other words, that fight was a close fight. I also want people to revisit Adney Yildurum against Canelo. You can tell a lot about a fighter by how he reacts to being knocked down. Now, first, let me point out, in my opinion, Canelo is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport of boxing, right? Understand, he stops Kovalev, stops him. And Kovalev, of course, at the time, had the belt at 175 pounds. Canelo fights Yildurum at 168. Right? Canelo comes forward. Guess what, folks? Look at the film. Yildurum, whose nickname is Mr. Robot, comes forward. Yildurum, at the beginning of the fight, is firmly convinced that against Saul Alvarez, he can control the pocket. Well, Canelo throws an excellent straight right hand that drops Yildurum. Right? When Yildurum gets off the canvas, this is like two rounds in, two or three rounds in. When Yildurum gets off the canvas, right, he motions to Canelo as if to say, all right, that was a good punch. Understand, Yildurum is surprised by it. Not only that, when he gets off the canvas, when he gets off the canvas, he wants the other fighter to know, okay, you've done better than I thought you would, right? I'll give you that punch. Yildurim then continues to fight. Guess what, folks? He continues to come forward. Now, the thing to understand with Canelo is Canelo is a technician, right? Canelo is changing the angles of punches. He has an explosive left hook. You do not want to be in the pocket against Saul Alvarez. That was the fight style Yildurum chose because that's what Yildurum does. He's front foot heavy. Forget the back foot. He's front foot heavy. He wants to own the pocket. He wants to get you on your back foot. He wants to use his head, and I don't mean mentally, I'm talking about physically. He wants to get his head under your chin. And he wants to wither you with a non-stop pressure attack. Now, he's vulnerable to uppercuts. He's not that fast-handed, right? He wants to get deep in the pocket. He's only fought, lost to elite fighters. In addition to Durrell and Canelo, he lost to Chris Eubank, right? In each of the fights, he's coming forward for the majority of the time that he's in the ring, right? At his best, and this is overlooked by many people, Yildurim is actually a combination puncher on the inside. Now, this fight would be difficult. For him, if it were a tall guy who knew how to use height, who could keep Yildurim reaching for him, who could move, have Yildurim have a hard time of closing the gap, right? A tall guy who had a great straight right hand, like, let's say, a Vladimir Klitschko or an Anthony Joshua. Right? A tall guy who had prodigious power, who could punish Yildurim for his predictability. You know he's going to be front foot heavy. You know he's not going to spend a lot of time with lateral movement. You know he's going to come inside. You know he's going to try to control the pocket. I don't believe Jack Cullen has those skills. I think Jack Cullen is a guy who, first off, is going to be gaining weight to fight in this fight. Second, he's going to be trying to arm wrestle Abney Yildurim for control of the pocket. 
Folks, that's Yul Durham's game. That's his game. Right? I believe, too, that with a bigger guy who's leaning over the pocket, there's more to hit. Yul Durham, who likes to bend over and come forward, is going to be hard to find even as he stands in the pocket. I don't believe Yul Durham here is facing a Durrell or a Canelo or a Chris Eubank level talent. Because I don't think Jack Cullen knows how to use his height, I'm expecting Yul Durham, who did lose two recent fights, but again, to two elite fighters, I'm expecting Yul Durham to exceed expectations in this fight. I'm expecting the underdog, Yul Durham, to win the fight. I don't even plan to hedge it. The play I like here is the underdog, Yul Durham to win outright. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Yul Durham also is a pretty good body puncher. I'm expecting this to be a hook contest. Understand too, Yul Durham didn't get too beaten up by Canelo because he was smart enough to retire in his corner. Now if there's a red flag, it's the fact that Yul Durham did retire against Canelo Biggest fight of his career in his corner, right? He didn't have the busted eye socket that Billy Joe Saunders had, right? You have to investigate this fight carefully to see if the reason for Yul Durham's retirement was due to an injury or whether it was due to a bruised ego. In any event, Canelo did not have the opportunity to beat up Yul Durham over eight, nine rounds. Yul Durham quits early in that fight, right? I think he's going to pick up the pieces here. I like Yul Durham to beat Jack Cullen in their fight at 168 pounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.